What's going on guys, TG or Thunder God here, and today we're talking about two of my favorite fictional characters, Virgil the son of the infamous demon Sparta from the DMC series, and Sasuke the last of the Uchiha from Naruto. Both these characters embody the need for power for the sake of a higher purpose while taking supreme L's from their more lightly colored counterparts. I'll be taking a look at Virgil from the end of DMC3 and Sasuke from the end of the war arc and seeing who would come out on top as I believe these two are very comparable not only in character but in strength at these two points in their respective series. That being said, make sure to like and subscribe if you're new here, enjoy this type of content, want to see more DMC stuff. And with that being said, let's get into the video. We'll be starting off with Virgil who gives us quite a bit to go off of from his showings in DMC3. For speed, there's a lot we can go off of in DMC3. One of the big things that people bring up is the rain feat performed by Dante and Virgil during their fight where in a rainstorm their sword strings create a dry area by cutting all the raindrops around them, commonly estimated to be a total of 108,000 raindrops. And assuming Dante and Virgil cut 54,000 raindrops each, as this is an even exchange, then using pixel measurements taken from Dante's height and the length of a rebellion, along with taking the angle the sword is swung, we're actually able to gather the distance Dante swings his sword and how far it travels. I won't waste your time with the calculations, they'll be in the description along with being on screen for all the math, but essentially this comes out to Mach 309,467.647, or 35.073% the speed of light. Now, some people might be like, okay, you know, it calcs, I don't know, it's a little iffy for me. There are other calculations taking Dante's Rebellion and Virgil's Yamato, basing them on real life katanas and claymores. And the secondary calc is actually based on the dome's volume and the distance the swords would have had to move to cover it. In which case, we can kind of get those. I'm gonna throw the calculations on screen. For Dante's Rebellion, it's 40 million, 55,755 meters per second or 13.35% the speed of light. And for Virgil, it's 42,206,785.367 meters per second or 14.689% the speed of light. Either way you get it, it's just more so a relativistic feat, just something very safe to start off of. But these speeds are low ball as Dante is also seen in DMC3 dodging attacks from an enemy called the Damned Rook. Another world crafted chess piece that omits a laser beam from it as an attack. We know verbatim it's a laser beam as the DMC3 guide refers to it as such. On top of that, it follows certain principles that restricts light and other beams within our own laws of physics, such as a beam traveling in a straight line. The beam cannot be interacted with by humans, or in this case, Dante, who actually can't strike the beam. And the beam has a consistent speed, never slowing. Now, Dante can dodge these same lasers, even from a near point-blank range, and is able to jump over the damned rook to do so, which is roughly his full height when the rook is fully unfurled. Using a simple calculation of distance move times speed of light in meters per second divided by distance from the beam initially, we can determine how fast Dante would need to move in order to dodge in this way. Using the distance Dante did move, which is 1.9 meters, um, he would actually just need to dodge the size of his head or 0.38 meters given the human head is one fifth of our height. However, he's extra, it's in his nature. This is the point of the Devil May Cry games. They're there to style, not necessarily to perform these crazy feats. And using a low ball simply of the height of Dante's head, which was 0.38 meters, times the speed of light being 299,792,458 meters per second divided by 0.3 meters gives us 1.2 times the speed of light or FTL. And a higher end being the more consistent and accurate depiction, which was the height Dante actually jumped 1.9 meters is actually 6.3 times the speed of light, the higher end being the better assumption as this is what Dante actually does. And this is very low end, even if you only played DMC3 as Dante is shown fodderizing Nevon, who drops literal lightning on him during their fight. And this is not taking into account the fact Dante grows far stronger throughout each DMC game, and DMC3 is no exception to that. This is the same for speed of light as well. Now there's other feats I won't mention as they occur with stronger versions of the character. Like a lot of people bring up the fact that Dante can deflect Mundus' particle beam or the fact that Artemis shoots out light arrows and stuff like that. I'm not going to be bringing that up, but just, you know, speed of light is very casual for DMC. It's very consistent. You know, there's a lot of evidence. A lot of fodder enemies who kind of just get stunned on by the heroes do this. And to even, like, further supplement this point, this is based Dante and Virgil who perform these feats in the game. This is not including their devil trigger, which will be covered later on. 
For strength, we actually do have a very good indicator of how strong Virgil is, as it's been stated in the DMC5 novel before the Nightmare, Virgil would have been able to defeat a weakened version of Mundus who wasn't fully revived if he hadn't run a gauntlet and been so wounded in DMC3. Itsuno, current senior director over the DMC franchise, has stated the manga and novels are canon. So where does this weakened Mundus lie? Well, in the DMC3 manga, the former demon god Pluto separated the demon world and the human world. The human world was born from the darkness that is the demon world, with both being halves of the universe. It is stated he did so physically, as the terminology used to describe the feat was that Pluto tore it asunder, which pertains to a physical strike. Why is this relevant? Well, before he ate the Clyphoth fruit, Mundus slew Pluto, albeit with an army. This is irrelevant, however, because Mundus then consumes the fruit of the Clyphoth tree, becoming the new demon king. The Clyphoth fruit is no small amp at all. We've only seen two of them. Um, once every several thousand years, the chair bears a fruit made of con this condensed blood, and whoever should eat the fruit gains sovereign power to rule over all. Mundus was able to eat the fruit, followed by Yurizen or Virgil later on, both gaining ridiculous power buffs from it. Following this, Mundus then fused the universes into one. DMC3 confirms both universes have a space-time fabric, so merging them would be a universal feat at the very least, even if you want to make an argument that there's some translation issues. For example, uh, a common one in the Naruto series is the kanji with Sakai which can be translated to either world or universe. However, this is not the case as the DMC1 guide particularly states that the human world is a universe. And this is not the only time we see this feat in D DMC is after the universe is fused, Sparta, Virgil's father, split the universes apart. There's also more evidence towards this whole universal argument when you look at the fact that the demon world is also called the dimension in multiple forms of media and also has stars within it. It's even stated that the demon world would eventually consume the human world if they were combined and that was kind of the whole plot of DMC4 which really just speaks to the power of these characters and especially Sparta who still was able to hold back universes from colliding with one another far after his death. There's even a fee in DMC1 where Mundus seemingly creates his own universe and when Hideki Kayama asked about it, he did clarify that it was a universe. Now, I'm not going to use this too much as Hideki has a bit of a tendency to give troll answers to loaded questions on social media. However, this is a very simple question, but the point I'm trying to make is that there's just a lot of supporting evidence for this. But the main takeaway is that these are individuals who can split apart two individual universes and then merge them back together through sheer power alone. Um, and I'm going to kind of like talk about why it's more so like a strength thing and not necessarily a hacks a little bit later when talking about some Naruto stuff but this is just a very common feat in the DMC franchise um, I don't want to stick too much longer on it it's just very casual there's plethora of evidence to discuss it with even minor demons such as the beast heads who are stated to be able to end the human world world in DMC is shown to consistently mean universe or dimensions such as DMC 2 so it's, it's just outlandish to say like this Virgil at this point at this strength would not scale to this now I know some people might be a little like turned off i guess you could say by the idea of like dmc characters being universal but i want you to understand something about the dmc games and that is the main prerogative of the characters is simply to get style points their main objective is to see how much they can flex other enemies and just style up and dance while they do it that is why in every dmc game there is a style meter that you can level up by doing different combos their main objective is to look cool and style up on their opponents, not necessarily perform these ludicrous feats of strength. So I just kind of want to point that out to why these characters don't do a lot of what they do. It's just because it's not necessary and that's not their objective. A lot of these characters are goofy and like to have fun during combat. Dante being the main example of that, how he's consistently joking with enemies and just having a good old time while doing it. Now I'll be talking about Virgil's abilities slash weapons in his arsenal. Starting off is the Beowulf Gauntlets and Greaves. Beowulf, a mighty demon who thought to take his hatred of Sparta out on the Dark Knight Sun. How Virgil, however, defeated him so completely that there was nothing left but these boots and gauntlets. Imbued with the power of light, they shine in close quarters combat where single fully charged attack can unleash immeasurable power. We then have Virgil's trademark weapon given to him by his father, the Yamato, who originally created the Yamato alongside the Sparta and the Rebellion when the Dark Knight split his power into three pieces. Virgil's Yamato has spatial manipulation, being able to create portals casually via sword slashes. There has been many points in the series where the Yamato has straight up negged conventional durability, even when it's wielded by Sanctus in DMC4, who could cut through 
and into Nero's Devil Arm that was previously blocking Dante's Revelion. Some people try and debunk this notion with the feat of Lady blocking Virgil's Sword Swings with their Rocket Launcher. However, the case would simply be this, and I'm going to add to this more later. The Yamato scales to Virgil himself, and when it is blocked by Lady, Virgil is extremely fatigued to the point Jester, someone who has fought her compared to full power Virgil and Dante, could bully them. Demons and hybrids all use demonic slash magical energy for both magic and physical attacks. Reduction of demonic energy affects physicality shown with Dante in the first novel and also Virgil and Dante here. The DMC1 guide mentions Dante and other demons gain and lose power based on how much damage they take and deal. Likewise, Munda states Dante is weaker in the demon realm, but the, again, the situation applies here and kind of gives segue into like how these fighters while insanely strong are not unstoppable virgil can summon spectral swords that can attack his opponents from all directions is capable of creating shields that can protect the user again force field creation if you want to get into it light manipulation with the beowulf gauntlets and greaves said to create small supernovas on impact on top of this virgil and dante also have ridiculous regeneration dante for example is completely capable of surviving being shot in the head and face at point blank range and Virgil instantly regenerated from being bisected in half in the abdomen by Dante. Impalement via sword is a casual regeneration feat in DMC. Dante actually powers up this way, ironically. Virgil also separates the man from devil within him this way as well. So they just have some really potent regeneration, which is actually taken further when they activate their devil trigger. The devil trigger being a transformation in which Dante and Virgil take on a demonic-like appearance and in this form they gain a 2 through 10 times multiplier from their base forms in terms of speed and power. This is discussed in multiple guides throughout the DMC series. And on top of being, you know, a transformation that powers them up, they gain additional resistances along with being healed completely after transforming. So this is a very complete power up that comes with a lot of benefits. I already discussed the healing. I'll talk about some of their other benefits a little later, but this is just overall a very complete power-up. Sasuke's speed is a little more simpler to talk about in the sense that there's just a lot of verbatim statements that people use. Um, I'm just going to kind of run down a list. There's the Haku's Ice Mirrors being stated, Speed of Light in Part 1, the Water Release, Water Fang Bullet being stated to be Speed of Light, the Mufune data book statement with light sword slashes. The Raikage approaching the speed of light, which would be between 51 and 99% the speed of light as he's approaching, so it'd be more than half. The Daori data book statement, where Daori uses and manipulates lights using his laser circuits technique. We have the Sejar light fang and just a, a plethora of calcs to go off of as well, just in terms of these characters and their speed. Even looking at some basic scaling, where characters are far faster than relativistic fighters like the Raikage, we can see insane jumps in power and speed like Mike Guy for example right towards the end of the war arc Mike Guy enters the eighth gate amping him tens of times now each gate is said to be a dozen times multiplier in part one so the eighth gate should logically be a hundred times multiplier why bring this up assuming that Mike Guy or any fighters he scales to is like relativistic right like 33% the speed of light for example like one third the speed of light that eighth gate would put him 33 times over the speed of light. You get what I'm saying? So even if you want to argue with like a statement here or a statement there, you know, which is fine, obviously, argue away, you know, especially with the part one stuff, you know, uh, pre Shaputin, I think there's a case to be made. Uh, I believe there is like a bit of narrative intent with like speed of light towards the end of the war arc The language is thrown out a lot like you see a lot more speed of light statements like in the war arc So I believe there was narrative intent there But regardless I'm putting these two characters like relative to one another in speed for the sake of this video Just you know off what I'm providing so we're gonna get into the next section I'm gonna be honest this low speed point doesn't really matter anyway strength now Throughout the Naruto series, there have been a lot of impressive feats from Madara slicing down mountains to Tonari slicing the moon in half. Now, for some reason, there's a big disconnect with Naruto and the fans and hearing the word planetary being said in the same sentence. Despite the fact that there is a great amount of evidence to support this, I'm not going to take too long because I'm sure everybody's kind of heard these arguments already. Off the Nine Tails, there's multiple data book statements that verbatim state it can destroy a planet. And no, I'm not just citing how... He can turn the world to ash, because I know someone's quoting that. There are other statements, like the fourth data book, where Kurama is said to have earth-shattering power. Even if you want to nitpick at a certain entry or translations, there's a certain 
and clear consistency within these entries in association with the nine tails being planetary plus and this is not even including the ten tails ten tails itself shown as a small planet comparable to that of earth said to give birth to the universe obviously hyperbole and should be interpreted as world or planet this is consistent in baruto as well as the ten tails are all seedlings planted onto worlds for the sole purpose of consuming them and creating a chakra fruit even the otsutsuki philosophy is to consume planets and their chakra fruits to become an ultimate god so at the very least, planetary is something that is talked about a ridiculous amount in the Naruto series. Now, to take it a step further, people also argue for the fact that Kaguya, with her expansive truth-seeking orb, was going to completely eradicate her dimension with its own quote-unquote space-time. Now, now, I'm not going to be using this for this video as it's just too controversial. It's been a subject of debate within the Naruto community for way too long. It gets into the translations of Sakai, looking at each of the data book statements pertaining to it. It also gets into the kanji and how it differs, colloquial speaking, from the actual translation. And there's a whole subject of debate on that. And there's also the argument of some people believe the expansive truth seeking orb is more of a hacks and that it doesn't actually scale to like Kaguya and her strength. And the reason it's not a hacks in the case of DMC is because. Demons draw on the same energy pool for their raw power and hacks. Demonic slash magical energy. Average demons can't even channel demonic energy into quote unquote hacks and, and purely use it for strength. There's also some arguments for Momoshiki in the novel, but Sasuke doesn't really scale to that Momoshiki regardless, so... Even if I gave it the Universal Naruto stuff, Virgil would just be stronger. So, not gonna spend too much time on that. For ability, Sasuke has access to the Sharingan with minor precog, genjutsu, and general buffs around all his stats. Shidori variants, he has fire style and fire style variants. He has the Mangekyo Sharingan said to be multiple times stronger than the regular Sharingan. He has a Matarasu with flame control. He has the Susano in its varying stages. All of the Renegon abilities, I and mean, you, you could maybe argue against that point, but I'll include it since Sasuke does showcase most of them. And he also has a Mino Tajikara, his Renegon teleportation, and overall just a very potent arsenal. Now, before talking about how the fight would actually go, it's very clear at this point that Virgil does have the strength advantage. You can make the case that they're somewhat relative in terms of speed. Um, a lot of people bring up some DMC1 stuff to really get these characters crazy fast, but Virgil just doesn't scale to the Dante and Mundus that perform those feats, so that's kind of why I say you can make a case they're relative. So, how would this fight go? So, starting off, if these two actually did lock blades, Sasuke's sword should shatter instantly. Even considering, generally in the Naruto series, characters and their weapons kind of scale to one another, you can see this with Sasuke and his basic sword versus Kinshiki's energy weapons. Wouldn't really matter because Virgil's verbatim stronger so he would be able to just shatter Sasuke's blade on top of it being a superior weapon. Even if they didn't initially lock blades and kind of felt each other's out with Sasuke's Sharingan, he can see the patterns of his opponent's physical movements and attacks, having his combat ability, you know, improve during the fight. Virgil, on the other case, can match Dante who was able to defeat the Black Knights. The Black Knights were created by Mundus to kill Dante and Virgil after carefully studying how Dante, Virgil, and Sparta fight. The Black Knights themselves have command over techniques that allow them to spark patterns far beyond their opponent's abilities. To the point the Black Knight Gliver could detect patterns in Dante's attacks instantly and adapt accordingly throughout the fight. Dante and Virgil themselves are capable of this prowess in battle which can even be seen after the events of DMC5 where Dante and Virgil can continuously read each other's evolving fighting styles and patterns for an extended period of time. This is far beyond what the Sharingan's actually capable of as we see Sasuke get hit multiple times in the series while having it active. So it's not like it's just this end-all be-all Sasuke can like easily perceive everything that's coming in. Even if he does perceive it, he has to be fast enough to dodge it. So you can make the case that Virgil wouldn't instantly blow Sasuke out the water. However, his sword would shatter instantly and even if they kind of got into a scuffle, Virgil has just shown better adaptation to his opponent's fighting style at mid-combat than Sasuke is able to achieve with his Sharingan. It then falls to Sasuke's other hacks to kind of make up the difference here and potentially give him any sort of edge against Virgil, especially this initial encounter, Genjutsu being one of the most prominent ones to talk about. The issue is, Virgil has actually encountered something similar to Tsukuyomi in his own series. In the DMC3 manga, Virgil can resist the Sins of Sparta statue that drive people mad, putting them in a Tsukuyomi-like illusion when they touch the statue. And Virgil is actually able to will himself out of it and adapt beyond it. Sasuke's Genjutsu could be argued to be much more potent than anything Dante slash Virgil could have encountered. Being able to resist the infinite Tsukuyomi, rob bodily functions from the opponent by a glance, with even minor space-time manipulations similar to Itachi in the light novel The Day the Wolf Howled. 
However, to say Sasuke uses Genjutsu on the level of Tsukiyomi would be far-fetched to say the least. The only potential way I could see him taking down Virgil with Genjutsu would be via his Rinnegan. And even then, demons are unaffected by the demon world, which can warp the minds of men. So, you can make a case that Genjutsu could potentially work. However, Virgil's just shown such resistances. I will be at the Sins of Sparta feat isn't an instant snap out. So, Sasuke could potentially throw out another one of his techniques while Virgil's under the Genjutsu. Virgil has shown such resistances. Let's say we do give Sasuke the benefit of the doubt, right? He throws out another one of his techniques, like Amaterasu. How would that interact with Virgil? I would honestly say it's pretty unlikely that Amaterasu would even hit Virgil in the first place, as there's many characters in the Naruto series who can sense it coming and straight up neg it, whether that be blocking it or blocking it with their own chakra like Naruto does in the Final Valley. Even Killer B, when we see Sasuke use Amaterasu for the first time, is actually able to block it with his 8 tails tail. He just doesn't know what the technique actually does. For Virgil, if there's some miracle actually did hit him, you could make the case that he could actually regen while it's burning him, and it would just counteract the effects of the Amaterasu. There's been faster attacks in the DMC series, which characters like Virgil or Dante have been able to regen before the attacks even completely gone through them. Virgil could legitimately just fight while the Amaterasu is burning, and he's just constantly rehealing until the flame eventually puts itself out from burning the skin that it was originally intended to burn. There's also the question of the Rinnegan abilities and how those would work. For example, if Sasuke did use the abilities of the Pareta Path and attempted to steal Virgil's soul, which is a bit questionable if he can even do in the first place, it's unlikely that would work either as there's enemies in DMC called Soul Eaters, said to feast on the souls of its victims and in game they can kill Dante very quickly. However, Dante is immune to their effects in his Devil Trigger mode. You also have Nivon who can literally one shot Dante with a kiss, she sucks his soul or life force out. Again, Dante is immune to this with his Devil Trigger. And there's a device in DMC that sucks the soul out of whoever holds it and gives power. Dante and base was able to resist it but with great fatigue but then he transforms into his devil trigger state and is actually able to fight while having an item that steals the souls of those who hold it so it's safe to say that even if Sasuke did catch Virgil with a soul steal or something to that degree Virgil could simply go into his devil trigger state and just neg it as even in the Naruto series it's shown to be somewhat of a tug of war when we see Nagato try and take the soul of Naruto and he's still able to combat it even though Naruto's weaker than that Nagato so soul steal via the Prada path is thrown out the window there's also Sasuke's Rinnegan teleportation that may have an initial effect on Virgil especially considering this technique has a high rate of success on opponents stronger than Sasuke himself such as Madara, Kaguya, Naruto, Fuse Momoshiki who is fighting a fatigue Sasuke, Jigen, and Ishiki. However, it's highly unlikely he'd land a killing blow or be able to kill Virgil with it as he usually just pairs it with Shidori or a sword swing, neither capable of killing Virgil. This technique is also a massive drain on Sasuke, so after its initial use, not only will it have given away and Virgil will be able to adapt to it, Sasuke's chakra supply will also have taken a substantial hit. We know this because in the war arc, Sasuke actually needs to let his eye recharge after continuously using his Rinnegan teleportation and just fighting in general. Now that's not to say it's impossible for Sasuke to beat Virgil, right? As the DMC1 god mentions, Dante and other demons gain and lose power based on how much damage they take and deal. The problem is Virgil, on top of of being verbatim stronger arguably faster would not get beaten down to that degree by Sasuke and even a battle of attrition is out the window as demons can last hours in a battle without pause fighting entire hordes of demons and fights against demon bosses without rest or relevant signs of fatigue only showing it against prolonged fights against those who are comparable to them they showed the need to only recover a mere seconds after combat and can also recover their stamina and energy when they're in their devil trigger in the middle of combat both Dante and Virgil, after cutting down the Clypod tree on June 15th, resumed their friendly rivalry for 39 days straight from June 15th to July 24th. This obviously trumps Sasuke's best feats, which is fighting 24 hours against Naruto and some hours before in the war against fighters relative to himself. Virgil's most valuable asset, though, is his accelerated development and his ability to gain ridiculous power just by doing normal activities like when Nero trained for one month to get stronger to face yours in once again by simply killing demons something that Dante and Virgil also do on a daily basis or by merely just existing like their father Sparta who decided to seal his powers away because he was fearing how powerful he was growing through just by him existing they're capable of becoming much stronger faster and more skilled when they're in the middle of combat 
after a battle or after being defeated. They can adapt to anything that doesn't kill them instantly getting new powers and abilities and resistances against corresponding threats in mere seconds like when Dante adapted to the hazardous environment of the demon world in his base form to overcome its effects. This is the same with Virgil in the Sin of Sparta statue that was capable of driving normal people into insanity. They are easily able to adapt to and overcome attacks that are able to destroy their souls, their bodies, and even their minds. So any new technique not only isn't effective against them as they're able to overcome it instantly, but also this is only really relevant against fighters of relative strength as they can simply just grow beyond it instantly. Any other technique Sasuke has would just not be that effective against Virgil in this confrontation like the Susano, which gets negged by Virgil's ability to ignore conventional durability along with just being a bigger target. Flame control wouldn't be too valid as even if Sasuke shot Amaterasu Yusaga Magatana beads at Virgil. Virgil could just make a barrier and counter with his own spectral swords. And this whole discussion is just more so talking about base Virgil. This isn't talking about his devil trigger. So let's say I give Sasuke the best situation and said he was able to fatigue base Virgil. Virgil can go into his devil trigger, regenerate any damage he took, and come back multiple times stronger. It's just not in the cards for Sasuke. And overall, Virgil is the wrong type of fodder for Sasuke. He's like if you gave Sasuke more hacks and resistances with all the benefits Naruto has as a fighter, i.e. nigh infinite stamina and insane regeneration. So in short, Virgil's stronger, arguably faster, and just has resistances to everything Sasuke does, and even if you think Sasuke catches him lacking with one of his techniques, Devil Trigger is just such a win condition. And I didn't even mention like the Beowulf gauntlets or anything because they're honestly not that necessary for Virgil. He would just honestly end the fight very quickly. Uh, I'm giving Sasuke the benefit of the doubt here. So that's the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I just want to introduce DMC to my channel. I know a lot of people liked it. There's no real like, I don't see too many people talking about DMC. So, you know, let me know if you guys would want to see more of that. And that being said, uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.